Take him to the cell. What? Get used to them. After a while, you won't feel them. You'll never guess what I once was. Oh, no, he's off again. Chief cupbearer to the Pharaoh himself, the King of Kings. But I had enemies. Men who envied my position. Yeah, more likely they were tired of your endless babble. <laughs> <laughs> they whispered against me to the Pharaoh. Lies. Poisonous lies. But he believed them. I'm an innocent man. <laughs> yeah, we're all innocent here, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Where's your God now, eh, Joseph? <laughs> Joseph, perhaps you can help me interpret this strange dream. I dreamed I saw a vine with three branches that budded and blossomed and ripened into clusters of grapes. And the Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I squeezed the grapes, and the juice ran into the cup and filled it to the... You! Come with me! Move! You'll get no interpretation now, Chief Cupbearer. <laughs> These are my own beasts. You will tend them. In return, you will have privileges. A room to yourself. Good food. There may be yet another way my lord could enrich himself. As governor, my lord may put the prisoners to work and keep the profit of the labors for himself. Well? Because they are starved and diseased, they are too weak to work in. The Lord profits nothing from them. Only give them good food and a clean place to sleep. My Lord would gain greatly. You dare to bargain with me? Take him! The Pharaoh will discover your innocence. He will send to release you. This will come to pass in three days. That is the interpretation of your dream. Thank you, Joseph. Very well, but I want a quick profit. This is yours. You can wear it. If I may cleanse it, I'd prefer to wear this, my lord. Why? So that the lord may not cast me down once again for my vanity. Three days, exactly. Where does this power of yours come from? I wish you well, my friend. Don't forget me. <laughs> Why do I pay you? I pay you to solve the mystery of my dreams, so they cannot haunt me, nor torture me, nor rob me of my sleep. Yet of this dream you can tell me nothing. Why? Majesty, you... Silence! I, I once met a man who could interpret dreams. Right. 
rise. I am told you can interpret dreams. Sometimes, Majesty, if God so will it. This is my dream. I saw seven fat cattle come down to the Nile to drink. They were goodly beasts and fair to look upon. And I saw seven lean cattle, hideous to the sight, with their bones sticking out of the skin, their eyes evil. And then the lean ones turned on the fat ones. With their rotting teeth, they tore their flesh. They ground their bones into dust and devoured it and lapped up the blood with their tongues. Well, this is the interpretation. The seven fat cattle are seven years of good harvests. The seven lean cattle are seven years of drought and famine that will follow. All of the stores of the good years will be eaten up as the lean cattle ate up the fat. Then Egypt will starve. save his people from famine. How? Oh. In each of the good years, take one-fifth of the harvest to preserve it. Impossible. Great storehouses would have to be built and guarded, thousands of them. Besides, I know my people, they would cheat all of them. It could be done, Majesty. A man might do it if he had wisdom, discernment, and diligence. And you gave him the power. Power. You have the power to interpret dreams. What arts do you use? Oh, none, Majesty. The power is the power of my God. I have none. Majesty is right. It is impossible. I wonder. As your Majesty's chief minister, I know it to be impossible. Potiphar, tell me what you know of this man, Joseph. This ring upon his finger. He will be known as Zaphinath Panea. He is your master. Bow to him. Beyond Shechem. There's nothing. Every well dry. Even the river. You must go down into Egypt. All of you. There's food to be bought there. 
at a price. Not matter the price, Judah. We've gold enough. And we can't eat it. You have a quick tongue, Benjamin. Too quick for your years. Ah, wait till you see me bargain with those Egyptians, Simeon. You're not going. All of us, my father said. Yeah, you're too young, Benjamin. I may be younger than my brothers, but I'm twice their wit. You stay here. Too indulgent with him, father. My lord's off on that pannier. My people starve. I beg my lord to sell me food so that they may live and not perish. Has he the price? He has, my lord. Then you may buy, according to your need. My lord is great and merciful. Where do you come from? The land of Canaan, in the north, my lord Zathanapanea. You have the look of spies. Spies, my lord? Yes. Spies come to see if the land be clothed with plenty or naked with famine. Whether Egypt be strong or weak. No, my lord. We are honest men. The sons of Jacob. There's drought in the north. They come to buy food for our people. They are starving. We bring gold. You hill shepherds never starve. You're too canny. You must be spies. Oh, my lord. I swear we are honest men. Is your father, Jacob, yet alive? He is, my lord. How many sons has he? Eleven, my lord. Eleven? I see only ten. Our brother Benjamin is but a boy. Too young to make the journey. I'll sell you food. Just so much as to keep your people from immediate want and to ensure your quick return to Egypt. When you do return to prove your honesty, you will bring the boy with you. You. What's your name? Simeon, my lord. Take him. I will keep him here as a surety. If you fail to return bringing the boy, he dies. What are you doing? No food left. We must take some to make bread. We've far to go still. We must have our strength. Reuben! It's the money we paid. There's been some mistake made here. This was no mistake. This was done so that the Egyptian could call you thieves. It's a trap. I won't send Benjamin. Father. Silence. My brother Simeon will die if you don't send me. And if I do, and this Egyptian harms you, it'll bring my gray hairs down in solid of the grave. They already hate me because you favor me above them. Now you'd make them hate me more? You must send me. You must. My lord. A feast has been prepared as my lord commanded. They're eating now. Though with no great appetite. Except the boy.
This is the boy? This is Benjamin, my lord. Yes, he has the look of his brothers. There is no deception. There was a mistake made. At last we were here. Yes, I know of it. It was a mistake. My own cup you've been drinking from, Benjamin. It's very fine, my lord. I never saw the like. Pharaoh himself gave it to me. Huh? You have proved your honesty. Take what food you need and go in peace. Reuben, some wine. Now I'm hungry. Come Enjoy. It's your bed. Now. Robert! My lord's kindness with treachery. You return evil for good. My lord, I swear by the God of my father, we are innocent. You perhaps, and your brothers. But the boy, how can he be innocent? I swear I am. Then who concealed it? Did my servants? Did I? Then who? The case is clear. You and your brothers may take what you've bought and go back to your country. The boy I will keep as my slave. Oh, my Jesus, God. My Lord. My Lord, I beg of you to let him go. Take me in his place. The loss of him would kill my father. There was another boy, Joseph. He was lost. How? Was he lost? In the desert, wild beasts devoured him. My father's grief was terrible. Take Benjamin from him and you kill him. He's a good man, the best of men, wise and gentle in his ways. Leave us! Your brother Joseph was not killed. You and your brother sold him into slavery. Here is the bill of sale. Written proof of your treachery. How do I come to possess this, do you think? Can't you guess? Reuben? Simeon? I am Joseph. I am your brother. My mother was Rachel. My father, Jacob, wrestled with God himself at the fort of Jabbok. No. Yes, Reuben. How could I know this unless I am Joseph? Oh, no. No, don't be afraid. I mean you no harm. I know that Benjamin is innocent. My own servants placed the cup in his sack. You have nothing to fear. See? 
see? I forgive you. All of you. How can you forgive us? It was all God's purpose. He brought me here so that I could save my father's people from famine. Simeon. Reuben. All is well. All is well. Joseph. Judah. Go to your father. Tell him his son Joseph is alive. Tell him to bring the people down into Egypt. That they may live. My beloved son. <laughs> you will all remain in Egypt and live with me. I and you, the staff of Abraham. Father, brothers. <laughs> These Hebrews will soon be more numerous than your own people, Majesty. They will overwhelm us. Your Majesty must be yet more severe against them. How? I make them suffer, they bear it. I seize their gold, they heap up more. I starve them, they flourish. What can I do? From each family, take the male children as they're born and kill them. Nothing less will serve, Majesty. So be it. My name is Amram. This is my wife, Yochaved. My son, Aaron. And my daughter, Miriam. What of your other son? God has not blessed us with another. No? People here say that your wife was with child. She's not so anymore. Therefore, the child has been born. A male child. No. And the people have lied. The people have said nothing. I have no other child. They'll return.
It's no use, Yakovet. Someone will talk. They'll find him. over to your father's soldiers, my lady, at once. We are sworn to report such a child. Beautiful to look upon. <laughs> See how he stops his crying at my touch. I'll keep him. Defy the pharaoh's order? Who better to defy than the pharaoh's daughter? But how will my lady feed the child? I'll pay a wet nurse, of course. My lady, who are you? How dare you come in here, girl? Don't you know it's forbidden? I know a woman who can nurse him. She too is a Hebrew. Are you certain she'd be willing? I'm certain, my lady. Very well. I'll pay her. She'll have my protection. My lady is very good. There's a condition, though. When the child is well grown, you will bring him to me at the palace. He will live with me and be as a son to me. Knowing this, do you think the lady will still be content to nurse him? I'm sure she will, my lady. <gasps> It's agreed, then. His name will be Moses, because I drew him up out of the water. Better the boy had died. Father. As for you, Miriam, running off without a word, we were half mad with worry. I know your heart, Yochaved. It's a tender, loving heart. When the time comes to give the child over, it will be torn in pieces. As if by his death. You're a good man, Amram. You pray every day, you love God. But you don't know him. I see his hand in this. This will bring you nothing but sorrow, nothing but pain. Moses. What a fine looking boy he is. You know you're to live with me here, Moses. I have no son of my own, and you'll be my son. And I'll love and care for you like your own mother. I promise. Moses. You're summoned to your mother, I hear. Yes, Majesty. We'll see you later, then. I will follow, Majesty. Good. A perfect likeness. Most impressive, Majesty. Mm. But over time... Won't the rains and winds face it? Only the hardest and the most durable stone has been used in construction, Majesty. Hard enough to last a thousand years? Ten thousand, Majesty. 
How can I stay silent? When I see how the Pharaoh persecutes and enslaves these people. These are my people! No! Everything I have, I owe to you, Mother. But how can I forget that I was born a Hebrew, that I have a brother and a sister who are Hebrew? On your feet! He's dead. What's going on down there? He's dead, Majesty. At whose hand? Moses. Did you do that? I meant only to teach him a lesson, Majesty. What lesson? That the life of an Egyptian is worth less than that of the Hebrew? This cannot go unpunished, Majesty. My Lord Moses enjoys great favor and high position. But he's not about the law. He's a murderer. The law, Majesty. Yes, yes. Seize him! Shift these mangy beasts of yours out of here, right now, or we take them as the price of the water they had. My father has paid your lord for rights to this water. He paid a certain sum, yes, but not enough. He paid what was agreed. My father may be willing to pay more, but that's a matter they must settle between them. You go now, girl. Or we may take more than your beasts. My friend here has a taste for another sort of flesh. He's a strong man. I couldn't stop him. How strong? Tell your father, Jethro, that my lord demands a better price for the water. I and my sisters are greatly in your debt, sir. What is your name? Zipporah. Have you journeyed long, sir? Very long. Is your destination far? I've had no destination. Until now. There was a time when this petty lord would have crawled on his belly to me. I was high priest of this land of Midian, with power of life and death over the people. It's a trick, isn't it? Hmm? 
the breaking of a stone. It's done by art, not strength. Yes. Everything's a trick. But I'm grateful to you, sir. My daughters are precious to me. They're all my wealth. And all I now desire in the way of riches... It's true. My father was a rich man. I remember the fine house we lived in. The temple where he ruled. The idols and people bringing the offerings of precious stones and gold. All this he gave up. Why? It was when my mother died. He saw that the idols he worshipped were false. He knew that the gods had no power. He's right in that. The idols are false. But there is a god, Zipporah. I wonder. There's order in the heavens, Jethro. Where does it come from? It must come from God. What could a man know of a God so mighty as to make all this? Nothing. A wise man, if he would be happy, must be content. The love of a woman, the joy of a family, and the freedom of the hills. Send you to the Pharaoh of Egypt to deliver my people out of his kingdom. Who am I that I could do this? I will be with you. If I go to the people and tell them their God has sent me, and they ask what is his name, how will I answer? I am who I am. If they do not believe me, if they say it was not God who spoke to you. The staff you have in your hand, cast it onto the ground. Now take it up by the tail. By such signs, will they believe? I am not quick of tongue. I have no eloquence. I will be with you. I will give you quickness to your tongue and eloquence to your speech. Lord, I beg you. Send another. I will send your brother Aaron to you. He will speak for you. There is no danger, Father. 
The old pharaoh is dead. And his daughter. She who took me up out of the Nile, whom I called mother. She is dead too. I must go. Go! You ask me to let your people go. You say your God commands this. You say he is powerful. Prove it. Show me a sign of his power. Take the staff. Throw it upon the ground. Sorcerer makes a movement thus with his left hand. <laughs> a trick, Majesty. You are cheap sorcerers. Your god has no power. I refuse what you ask. For this, your people will pay a price. 
terrible price. Plague will descend upon Egypt. A blight will fall on your land. Behold, a miracle of God. <laughs> you will know the wrath of God. More sorcery, Moses. <laughs> Take the staff, and with it strike the waters of the Nile. Majesty, not blood, but fine red sand. If you do not let my people go, that they may worship God, my God will send swarms of flies upon you and your people. Say you to this. First the river Nile turns red. Then comes a plague of frogs. The one is the consequence of the first. Then biting gnats. Then flies. Our gods have greater power. your answer majesty i will not let your people go i will never let your people go then hear what god says i will go out through egypt every firstborn in the land shall die from that of the cattle in the field to that of the slave girl who sits at her loom even to that of the pharaoh who sits on his throne then such a cry rise up as was never heard Ever will be again. At sunset, you must take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood of a lamb and then touch it to the doorposts and the lintel. God will pass over your houses and no harm will come to you. <laughs>
your majesty. Destroy them all. You cannot. You can. They march across the desert towards the sea. Towards the sea? Yes. They're fools. They don't see that it's a trap. Of their god. How can they stand against the might of your armies? Huh? The innocent blood of your son cries out for vengeance. Destroy them all. Majesty. How many, Joshua? A great army. We must turn back into the desert, fight them in the open. It's our only chance. If we stay here with our backs to the sea, we're lost.
your brother performed in Egypt. Have the tales come as far as Midian? To the ends of the earth, I should think. It was trickery, Jethro. All of it, it must have been. I wonder. Do you? The laws that we make for ourselves are shallow, feeble things. They perish quickly. But the laws that came from God. From God, Jethro? Yes. Such laws, from God. They would endure forever.
no one is to approach the mountain. No one. Don't be afraid. I am afraid that without you, at my side, I'll fail. What do you want? Where's Moses? Why doesn't he return? He will return. His god has deserted him. And he's deserted us. No. Now the gods of Egypt will have vengeance. You fools! God made a path through the sea to save you. He has made water flow from the bare rock so that you might drink. He has sent his manna from heaven so that you might eat. What more proof do you need of his power? Where is Moses? Where is he? You can't answer. They can't answer. I say we must set up an idol to appease the gods of Egypt, or we will be destroyed. No! Wait! No! No, listen to me! Wait! Where will you get the gold to make your idol? From the people. When you have gold enough, come again. This is wrong. People will never give up their gold. It gives me time. to this. is the law of God. The God you have defiled! My God, this is a stiff-necked people. But from the depth of my soul, I pray you pardon 
our iniquities, our sins, to take us for your inheritance. Lord, if I have found favor in your eyes, I pray you grant them this. If I have not, blot not them but me from the book that you have written. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself any idols, nor bow down and worship them. You shall not make wrong use of the name of the Lord your God. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days shall you labor, but the seventh day is for the Lord. Honor your father and your mother, that you may live long, and that all may go well with you in the land I will give you. You shall not murder, neither shall you commit adultery, neither shall you steal, neither shall you bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his house, nor his servants, nor his flocks, nor anything that is his. Why have we wandered the desert 40 years, Joshua? Because the people rebelled against the Lord. Yes, the people have sinned. I too have sinned. When the Lord spoke to me in Midian, out of the bush that burned and was not consumed, I doubted him. For that, he punishes you now. Yes. And it is just. I accept. I cannot go with you. You will lead us. No. I am not worthy. The Lord's will, Joshua. 